Hello everybody and welcome back. A slightly different video today. Yesterday um, I pulled out my Cricut machine and I was using it to do lots and lots of fussy cutting as you can see here. Um, I actually have a lot more that I've been using in my project. Um, and when I was posting in the Facebook groups showing what my Cricut machine was up to, um, I did have a few people asking how it's done. There are lots of demonstrations where people are using their brother's Scan and Cuts, which also does um, fussy cutting, and they are brilliant. I was actually looking at possibly um, replacing my Cricut and getting a brother's Scan and Cut. However, the price point starts at around 350 for the kind of models that I was looking at, um, but can go a lot higher than that. And that's just a hell of a lot of money. I don't have that money. Uh, and I know that my Cricut machine is capable, so um, it just takes a little bit more work. So as I said, I did pull out my Cricut machine. Um, I've absolutely loved how well it has cut. So these pieces on here, you can see, I mean, I've got this teeny tiny little butterfly. It's cut that out brilliantly. I've got this hand. It's cut around the fingers brilliantly. Uh, this guy's got his walking cane. And again, it's cut all of those fine details really, really well. So I am very happy. And I've actually now put my Cricut on a shelf next to my crafting table so that I will pull it out more often when it comes to fussy cutting, especially if I've got a lot of little pieces like I have here. I do think the Cricut machine is a brilliant machine as I say in comparison to paying out the 350 plus for a scan and cut um, I think it's worth the couple of extra steps that you would have to take uh, to be able to upload your image and have them cut out. So as I said I did have a couple of people asking um, how it's done on a Cricut machine and how you kind of get your images in Cricut Design Space so I'm going to share my screen with you now and walk you through the steps. Okay so when you open up Cricut Design Space um, your home page will look something like this. Um, it may look different if you are on an iPad or a Mac device. I am on a Microsoft laptop. You go up to the top and you'll click New Project and that will take you to your blank canvas. Now you have all of your layers down the side, obviously we don't have any at the moment. Most of your um, settings are up the top, how you can change all the different shapes and then this gives you all of the different templates down the side. Now we want to upload an image so you can scroll down to upload and then that will bring you to this page. Now it will tell you what files are compatible, so you've got JPEG, GIFs, PNGs and a few others as well. I mostly probably upload SVGs, JPEGs and PNGs, I've not really tried the others. Um, and then all you need to do is click upload image. You're then going to browse for the file that you would like. Once you've chosen your file, it will pop up like this. So I'm using a page from my So Shabby kit. You then need to choose which image type you would like. Um, because we are going to be printing this, I do want the fine details and the blended colors. So I'm going to click complex and then click continue. Now, if you have Cricut Access, you can automatically remove all of the background. Um, I don't have that, I don't pay for that, so I'm going to scroll down and then you'll have your manual settings. I sometimes prefer to do the manual settings anyway because you have a bit more control of where it's all going. So the select option, which is the first option that's up, you just come over and you'll see the little plus sign on your cursor and you just click on the white space that you want removed and that will remove the whole background. Okay, I am going to zoom in a little bit just so you can see is a bit closer so now you can see that there are blue squares all around um, and there'll be blue squares all over now I also have on here um, these little bobbins which obviously have these holes here so I want those to be cut out as well so I'm going to click inside of each of those so that those holes are also cut out for me Now also on my pages I tend to have my logo. Now I'm not going to need that for this print and cut so I'm going to come over to the left hand side again and I'm going to click erase 
and then you'll get this little circle eraser as your cursor. I am just going to make it slightly larger just so it's a little bit quicker. So I'm going to come up to maybe a 30 and then I'm just going to erase that. You don't have to but obviously it's just a waste because it will print it and then it will try to cut it out as well. Once I'm happy that everything um, has been removed that I want to be removed, I'll just click apply and continue. You'll then be given two options. So you have a standard cut image that will just cut the shape out. It won't print anything. But the one we want is a print then cut image. It will not work if you already have your image printed and then you use the cut option. It won't work that way because of the way that the Cricut machine is calibrated. So you have to do a print then cut. So I'll click that to select it and then um, you can obviously change the name to whatever you like and then click upload. It will then bring you back to this screen and then if you scroll down a little bit you will see your uploaded image. So you just click on it so that it's highlighted and click add to canvas. This will then add it to your canvas but as you can see it's absolutely massive and over here you have a little red circle which is a warning sign. Um, if you click on that it will tell you that it is too large for the A4 paper size um, and something that Cricut now does which I love is an auto resize image. Okay, and now it has resized the image so that it will fit onto an A4 page. Now you may notice it does work in inches, you can change this so it is um, in centimetres or millimetres depending on what you prefer. And this is smaller than an A4 standard page. So if you were to print this out directly from your computer and not come through Cricut Design Space, you would have it at a slightly larger scale. It has to shrink it because when you come over to click make it it prints guidelines as well and to fit those guidelines on so here are the corners this is where it scans so it can see where it needs to cut so because of that it does shrink it down slightly so it won't be a full page but you can see it there on the mat and you can see over on the left hand side it says print then cut so that's exactly what we want your material size you can obviously change and select um, we use A4 paper here in the UK so that's what I'll have um, obviously I don't want it mirrored um, so now we are ready to continue so you just come down to the bottom and click continue okay and now you just follow the different steps so step one is to print so you click send to printer and it will bring up your printer options. So again, you'll have your preview to the side, um, how many copies you're going to be doing. You can add a bleed. All the bleed does is just guarantee that you'll have no white edges. So it will just um, bleed out the edges. Um, I tend to switch that off. It's entirely up to you. I am going to switch it off this time. And then you click print and that will print out on your printer. So after it has printed out, all you need to do then is place it onto your mat. So this guide shows you exactly how it should be placed. Make sure that the orientation is correct as well because that is important. Um, so for example here my bobbins are up the top in the top left hand corner. I need to make sure that it's applied to my mat in exactly the same way. So it shows you how to line it up on your mat. I use the blue mat for this type of cutting because it's not a heavy cardstock. For most of my fussy cuts I use 160 GSM, if I'm doing tags I might use something slightly heavier, so 200 GSM, but I find the light grip mat is absolutely fine for that. Now you have a couple of choices, you can either use the dial on your Cricut machine, obviously depending on the model that you have, I have a Cricut Explore Air 2 so I have this dial and then I can turn that to select whether I'm using paper, vinyl, light cardstock etc. I personally choose to have my dial set to custom that means that I will have lots of options here which I can choose from. Now I have bookmarked some of them so you'll see a little flag there that's because these are materials that 
I cut often. If you can't find the material you're after, you can click on browse all materials and then you can scroll through all of the different materials that your Cricut can cut. So I'm going to select a medium cardstock for this one. So you'll see it ticked and then you click done. And then it will tell you what tools to load. So you just slot your mat in, press the arrow button as it tells you to load your mat. And then it will bring up step four, which is pressing your go button, which looks like the little cricket symbol. So I'm going to press that and then it's going to cut everything out for me. Okay, and there you have your project. So to take it off, you just peel away, obviously, the excess paper. And as you can see, you've got everything beautifully cut out. Now to save um, the curling of the paper, the trick to doing this is to bring your board round and then if you bend it, these things will literally just pop straight off. So bend your board, they are a little bit flexible so don't worry about snapping and breaking it, you won't do that. You'd have to really bend it to be able to do that. Um, and then yeah, as I say, as you curl your board these things will just easily peel straight off and then you've got all of these items uh, cut out for you. Now I've got a couple of the little white spots there, you can just scrape those off. And then I'm just going to pop my carrier sheet back on just to protect my cutting mat. Okay, so I've zoomed you in for a closer look. As you can see, they've all fussy cut out brilliantly. Um, even this one, which has obviously jagged edges, it's gone round all of those edges for me, which is really good. Normally I have to get out... Um, some fancy scissors to try and kind of get that deckled edge back. Now I know some people may think that it's a lot of fuss having to go through your Cricut to print and then cut it, but obviously I would have to print it out anyway to use it. I'm not very good at fussy cutting, I have not got the patience for it, and I certainly wouldn't be able to get as close and get the details that I've gotten here with my Cricut. Now the scan and cut does look pretty easy, you don't need a computer but the steps are very similar so um, you scan your document so it doesn't go into a computer, you just pop it on the mat, it goes into the machine, the machine will scan it but you still have to select the background to um, erase so it knows where it's cutting. So that part is very similar, the only extra bit is that for a Cricut machine you do need a computer, you do need to upload your document to Design Space and it is printed slightly smaller than the full page that you're given because it has to also print those guidelines and those scan lines. But to save myself 350 to 400 pounds, I think I can deal with that. Well, I do hope that this was useful to those that were wondering how to use your Cricut to do some fussy cutting. I will put together a printable as well, which has screenshots and a step-by-step -step guide of how to do it. I'll try and do one for um, the computer, but I'll also do one for your iPad. If you have an iPad and you use the app, you can print and cut. You, however, can't do it on your phone. So if you have a phone and you use the app, you can't print and cut. You can only do it um, on a computer or on your iPad. So I will do a step-by-step -step guide um, as I say, if you work on an iPad and if you work on the computer, the screen does look slightly different. So I'll do some step by step instructions and I'll put those into my Kofi shop. Um, it may not necessarily be out when this video goes out, but I will upload it as soon as I can. And I'll notify you um, either in the Facebook groups or on my Instagram. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful crafty day and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much now. Bye bye.